All right, you just invested into a cutting edge CRM system for your business and your sales team. They are excited about it. You are excited about it. But what happens when that excitement fades? Like what happens when your team isn't using the system the way you designed it to be used? What happens when all of those touch points, that communication, that data, you're not getting because your team just isn't bought in to how it's supposed to be used. So before we dive into the strategies on successful tips to CRM adoption, let's talk about just the benefits of CRM adoption. And at the end of this video, I'm going to share with you my onboarding process for new reps to a CRM. If you can effectively onboard your reps to a CRM, and I'm not just talking use the tool, but really understand the power of the tool and how they can leverage it for themselves and their paychecks and for your business, then ultimately you're going to bring out higher productivity. You're going to streamline communication with your leads and you're going to be able to make better decisions as a business owner. At the end of the day, you're making more money. They're making more money. However, with sales reps, there are a lot of challenges to overcome to get them to buy in to do anything. So how do we get them to adopt the CRM successfully and really show them the benefits and how at the end of the day, it impacts their bottom dollar. So to overcome these challenges, you're going to want to measure you know, the CRM adoption. You're going to want to look at metrics like, is the sales team actually using the CRM? How many calls are they making? Texts, emails, um, what's the behavior in and outside of talking and communicating about the CRM when they're coming to your sales meetings? What's the feedback that you're getting when you're on one-on-ones? What are you hearing about the, the motions that they're running? What hiccups or hurdles or obstacles are they running into? What data quality are you getting from the numbers and metrics that you are pulling from your CRM? Does it look right? Are things tracking the way that they should be, the way that you expected them to be tracked? And all of those things, all those feedback points are just going to bring you back to the overall effectiveness of the CRM itself and the adoption of the team. So let's dive into the strategies. Strategy number one, that is you need to lead versus manage. Now every sales team has a sales manager, but I really truly believe that leadership is going to transcend management when it comes to most, if not all things, when it comes to getting your sales team to adopt new strategies. So leading your sales team means involving them in the CRM decision-making process, getting buy-in from your top performers. Your top performers on your team have the most influence. If you start involving them in the decisions that you're making from an upper level management perspective, when you go to that sales meeting, you roll this new tool out to your sales team, you're not going to get pushback from that top performer. If that top performer is moaning and groaning about this new thing that's being rolled out, everyone else is going to attach onto their energy as well. But if that top performer is excited about what is getting rolled out because everyone's going to make more money, watch how quickly other people get excited too. So the difference between leading and managing there is managing would be saying, hey, we're doing this and I'm going to manage this process and make sure it gets followed. And leading would be bringing people along with you, showing them the way and how this can help the business make more money. Strategy number two, quite simple, create onboarding and training materials. So if you've built a CRM and you have SOPs or certain motions that you want implemented for certain stages of your sales process, document them. And I hear all the time, but I don't know how to create an SOP. I don't know how to SOP things for my business. Well, just take a look at what you're doing, what you know works, and then write it down. It's that simple. If you start to get really fancy with the way that you've built your CRM, you can start to track these motions inside of your account to see where leads or processes may be slipping through the cracks. In close.com, we do this through a collection of smart views that look like this. Strategy number three is going to be to ensure clean data and process adherence. So what I mean by that is if you're not sure if your data is being tracked the right way, you need to find a way to manually track it. You're probably manually tracking it before you got onto a CRM, maybe inside of a Google Sheet. Maybe you weren't manually tracking it at all. So this will probably be really, really hard, but you're going to make sure that the data is clean. Why do we want the data to be clean? With clean data, we can make really, really good decisions. We can make really good decisions from a sales level. We can make really good decisions from a marketing level. We can close that feedback loop from the sales to marketing team even faster. We get to make better decisions. The business makes more money and the reps make more money. You always want to bring it back to salespeople and showing them how they're going to make more money. That's what salespeople care about. They want to make more money. Hey, if you follow this process, you implement this system, you're going to put more touch points on your leads. Do you think if you put touch points, more touch points on your leads in this automated way or this simple way, do you think you can make more money? Yes, I do think I can make more money. Cool. Do we want to use this CRM? Obviously, um, the conversation 
conversation could look a little more complex to that based on your team and, and your emotion and, and how you communicate and lead your team. But they care about money, show them how to make more money. Number four strategy is gonna to be to invest in sales workflow automation. So you've got the CRM, you've got your team using it, but CRMs are really powerful, you know, close.com, HubSpot, go high level, when you actually know how to utilize all of the features inside of the CRM. So if you can start to take advantage of all the tools that can be automated, you can take that busy work off of your sales reps plate. And let me tell you, sales reps, myself included, hate busy work. So automate whatever you can, make life as easy as possible for your sales team so you can optimize for keeping them on the phone. Your conversions for your business are gonna happen in conversations. So if there's no conversations taking place, there's no conversions happening. How can we build this CRM and structure to where my sales reps stay on the phone and are having conversations? And the number five one to piggyback off of automations is gonna to be to build email and SMS templates where needed in order to simplify the communication tasks that your sales team has to do. It's gonna make the CRM adoption itself less intimidating. Some things you can automate could be appointment confirmations. When a new scheduled call comes in, can we send a text out from the lead owner that says, hey, contact first name, lead owner name here with company name, got your call booked, curious, what, XYZ. You want to ask an open-ended question when you're doing appointment conversations. That way you prompt a response. I always say that pre-call conversations are better than pre-call confirmations. So if you can confirm an appointment, that's one thing that's great, that's dandy, it's going to help our show up rate. But if you can have an actual full-blown conversation with the lead before they ever even get on the phone, imagine what that will do for your show up rate in the context of that call when you actually get on the phone with that prospect. So what does successful CRM adoption look like for or the hundreds of sales reps that we've onboarded to our custom built CRMs. It starts with building really clean accounts, making sure they work. Obviously you want to start with a good foundation and make sure that whatever you have built functions works properly. You don't really want your sales reps to find the issues in the account. So if you can build it beforehand, test it thoroughly beforehand, it'll be a lot easier to hand off to your team. Now that you've built it and tested it, you wanna document every single thing that you can along the way. SOP, whatever motions, if an SDR or a setter or someone that takes triage calls on your team, has to put an appointment confirmation on a lead 24 hours before, they've got to do it an hour before. You know, write that down. What do they say in those texts? Write that down. You know, in a lot of CRMs, you can schedule texts to go out. Write that down. Hey, for uh, appointments, you know, an hour before, we schedule a text that goes out to that lead. Here's how to do this. A tool I love to use um, for SOPs and documentation is called Tango. It's really amazing to be able to just click, click, click and build these really beautiful SOPs just based on your clicks themselves. And it documents everything for you and they're really easy to share with your team. Once we get beyond SOP and documentation, I'm going to give my sales team training videos that I've provided on how to use the tool for our motions. And I'm going to ask the team to watch those videos. Typically, I'll host those videos inside of an LMS like Kajabi or school.com. That way I can track, hey, did they actually watch the video? Because I do care about that. And then I'm going to quiz them on it. So when we hop onto a one-on-one -on -one before they get onto the CRM, before they start taking sales calls, before they start performing whatever motion it is, we're actually going to sit 30 minutes one-on-one. -on -one, I'm going to quiz them. I'm going to say, how do you enroll a contact into a sequence? You know, what is your lowest hanging fruit based on these motions inside the CRM? How do you schedule a text to go out? How do you log notes after you take a call? How do you create an opportunity for a one deal? So I'm building a quiz based on our sales motion. That way the rep can show me their understanding on a call right in front of me. And I can have full confidence that when they start taking sales calls, I'm going to get the data that I need. I'm going to get the tracking that I need. I can trust that this person is going to follow the motions they need to follow because of the way that we've onboarded them to the CRM. Now from there, your job's not over. You should already be doing continued, consistent one-on-ones with your sales team. That's not the point of this video, but say you're doing on a weekly basis, a bi-weekly basis, a monthly basis. Part of that one-on-one -on -one should be spent inside of the CRM. Let's see what your inbox looks like. Let's see what your smart views look like and how many contacts are inside each list. You know, are you still following up with all of your no-shows? So to bring it all home, you buy a fancy new tool, a fancy new serum. They're not cheap. They are worth their weight in gold when used the right way. And the adoption and the way that your team actually utilizes that tool is the most important. You can build the most beautiful CRM in the entire world, but if you can't get your sales team bought in to actually how to use the tool and why it's important and how it has impact to them and the amount of money that they're going to be able to make, then it doesn't matter what work you put into the CRM. It doesn't matter how much money you spend on the CRM. None of it will matter 
better if you cannot get your team bought in to actually using the tool. And once you do get your team bought into using the tool, I mean, I've seen very basic workflows in a previous video I filmed called How to Map Your Sales Process. I talk about how just mapping your sales process effectively inside a CRM can boost your productivity by 20% or more overnight. Guaranteed, I've seen it time and time and time and time and time and time again. But once again, it's only as good as your team's ability to adopt the tool and use the tool the way it was designed to be used. If you've been following me, you know that close.com is my preferred CRM. So obviously I have all the tools and playbooks for successful adoption to close.com. Now, with that being said, all of these topics that we discussed here are applicable no matter what CRM you're using. There's not a specific CRM that I made this video about. Now, if you're looking for a CRM or you're using close.com and you want to take advantage of all of its features, you can book a time with me or my team somewhere on the link in the description where we'll actually workshop what your sales motion looks like and map it together before we build it inside of the CRM itself. So if that interests you, click the link below to schedule a call in the description of this video. I'll be happy to chat. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more CRM tips and tricks. I'm here on my MacBook camera with my really nice mic, and I will continue to be here for you guys in future videos. So I hope to see you soon.